I'm going to ask you a question, then I have a follow up on right after. When it came to school, were your other siblings um, were they able to perform as well as you in school? No, um, I don't and, know if they. I don't know if they could have. I don't know if they wanted to. Um, that they, um, my sister was the pretty one, the popular one. My brother, other brother was the um, fun one. And my other brother, the, my the oldest brother, he did, he was kind of lost a little bit. So it wasn't their thing. And that's the one thing I was either the happy one and the smart one. So, Perfect. Um, and I'll yeah. tell you why. Yeah. And I'll tell you why I asked that, and I, you know, but that's what I suspected because there was, um, I was actually, I thought of you when I was telling this, this story to someone else a couple of days ago and I was hoping, well, not hoping because it's kind of good or bad, depending on how you look at it, right? But I was banking you to answer that way and I'll tell you why now. There's someone a couple of years ago I was friends with and she's an entrepreneur and she has four children, two by one father, two by another. Now it's two boys, two girls, similar to your situation, right? So that's why it remind me of this of the story. So there is one um, child, the second youngest, I believe, or the youngest. She did really well in school. The other three, not not as well as her. To your point, maybe they couldn't, maybe they didn't know how, or whatever the case. Right, they had other things going on for themselves. The problem with that child, because I came into um, to know the the mother through a friendship, and then ultimately meet her kids and things like that, is. The mother couldn't relate to that child because the mother herself wasn't studious. The mother herself didn't perform well. So you have the parents not able to relate to the child and you have the other three siblings unable to relate to the child on that level because this child is standing out in their own way because they want the mother, the parent's affection. And this is how they're able to do it because like you, they're excelling at something that they're really good at. So I'll speak to her about this child, about the daughter, and she would say, I can't relate to her. She does well in school and I know it's a good thing, but I don't feel that overwhelming joy that I feel that when the daughter performs well in dance, where the sons perform well in um, basketball or something else, right? And I would speak to the little girl and I would tell her that two things are gonna happen. One of two things are gonna happen. You're either going to continue to stay in school, excel, and stay in school, like you mentioned, to prolong you entering whatever it is you think is out there for you. And you're going to do really well. And you're going to leave your family behind because you won't be able to, because the more you excel, the less you're going to be able to relate to them. Or the other course of action, you're going to start to sabotage yourself in a way that's going to be noticeable and at least you're going to get the attention from those you're growing up with. Is that something that you kind of went through? Somewhat. Uh, my parents, none of my, well, two, parents, two biological two-step parents, um, none of my, three of my parents did not go to college. They, my mother wanted to desperately. And four children by the time she's 26 and divorced by that time, she just didn't have an opportunity to, she had to go to, had to, go to work. My stepmother, she had a master's degree. That's after the fact. Um, I do know in my heart that my mother lived vicariously through her children. I have a picture actually here um, that was taken after, she took great pride that all four of her children graduated from college. So, um, okay, well then we're all equal. I gotta go farther. And it wasn't just that at the time. I really didn't. I really didn't think about it at the time. And honestly, I don't think that was it. It's just in hindsight that may have been part of it. I really just. I really think that I was good at it. And I mean, I felt so so small. I mean, I have a picture here of myself at three and my son at three, and um, so innocent. And, thank you. So innocent and and pure, and untouched. There's no tarnish. Um, so how do I cope and and deal with these feelings of feeling inadequate and, and invisible. And um, my family was, well, you can have your mood. You're gonna go have it in your bedroom. Not, you're not gonna take it out on us. Can I have it out here, but not take it out on anybody? No. I, do I have to be happy all the time? 
do I have to make it make it seem like everything's okay? How do I cope? The only way I know how to cope is to to, to perform. And does anyone see that I'm hurting? And um, the only way I can get attention is if I stand out. And I can't stand out by by being in a quote unquote bad mood because there are no bad feelings. They're feelings. They don't. They're not fact. They they'll pass. I didn't know that at the time. I remember as a child, I told my stepmother, I think I was eight, that some, I told her, sometimes I feel so deeply it scares me. And I didn't know at the time that that's okay, that I will survive. It's, it's who's going to sit there with me and say, this will pass. You're not going to die. I didn't know any different. So did you like, want someone to sit there with yeah. you? Like, did you, yeah. did you mm -hmm. need someone for, yeah. I, did you see someone mm -hmm. with you at that point? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I remember, um, Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I remember telling my mom, you know, Joe's, Joe's pulling my hair. He's, he's hurting me. Um, I said, Jenny, she's calling me fat and ugly. And, and she's, she's saying these things that, well, well, I wasn't there. I can't do anything about it. Okay. Um, how do I make sense of that? Um, I wanted, I wanted an advocate. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.